Hey guys, it's Jasmine and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe and I hope this video helps you. Today is my How I Study for Physics video. I am actually wearing the same top as my chemistry video and that's because I filmed them on the same day just because they're going to be a little bit shorter than my maths one just because maths is evil. My number one, number one tip for physics is don't panic and remember your units. So in SQA, if we forget the units on the final answer, like calculations are normally at three, one for the formula, one for the substitution, and one for the answer. If you forget the units on the answer, you only get two out of three, even if it's the right answer. So always remember the units and just don't panic. Breathe, because I used to panic in physics and if I didn't know the answer, I'd be like, oh crap, I'm gonna fail. Oh my God, no. But if you just take a step back, obviously not physically because you're in an exam hall, but just take a step back, move on to the next question and come back and you'll usually find that you were, you were over complicating or you missed out reading a part of the question. Second most biggest tip, that's not a word, I know it is a word, but that wasn't a very grammatically correct English sentence. Remember to put your calculator in the right mode, so say if you're doing circular motion you need radians, but if you're doing electromagnetism or, I don't know, just something that doesn't include radians, make sure that it's in degrees because I knew someone who was actually in my year and he did a whole test in radians, so got all the final answers wrong. So as I said before, you get three marks for a calculation, so you only got two out of three on every question. So just make sure your calculator is in the right mode. <laughs> Another thing, I find really useful personally because I find visual visualization quite difficult is to draw little free body diagrams for forces or just like a diagram of what's going on in the question because sometimes I read the question and I'm like well what the hell is going on here so always having having a picture to look at to visualize always helped me to deduce what I needed to do to find the answer to the question. I think GCSE you have to learn the formulas again but again with the SQA we get given a formula sheet but if there's formulas again that aren't on the formula sheet I made flashcards and I would go through them so we had one that was like I think it was for a cylinder or something roll is it so, uh, a solid or a hollow cylinder rolling down a uh, um, slope and it was to do with moments of inertia and like conservation of rotational uh, kinetic energy and stuff. I, I don't know, I didn't really understand it. But I learnt the formula and it was all to do with like substitutions and taking out common factors. So I learnt that by putting on a flashcard and just looking, just going over the flashcard regularly. And also um, uh, stuff like that, I also put on sticky notes that I would stick around my desk so I'd be able to see it while I was sitting revising again. again Near exam season, past papers are your best friend. There's not a lot of questions they can ask you because there's only a set amount of stuff on your specification. Um, but if you're doing SQA, please, please practice op open questions because I personally found they're really, really difficult because I never really had a proper, really, really in-depth understanding of something. I would have like a general knowledge and I'd be able to answer questions and give ex basic explanations, but I would never have enough information to go into depth in these three marker open questions. And also these questions, leave them to the end. That's what, that was a tip from my teacher actually. So leave them to the end and then come back because they're only worth three marks. You could have like a 10 marker question on magnetic forces that you missed out because you were trying to answer this three marker uh, open question and that would just be stupid because you'd probably get the 10 out of 10 whereas you might only get one out of three. And as I said at the start, my biggest tip for physics is don't panic. Just read the question, read it again, if it doesn't make sense, move on and come back to it. And if you don't know how to go any further with the question, especially for SQA, write your formula down. It might be the right formula, even if you don't substitute anything in, you still get a mark for it. And say if there's a question that's like A, B, C, and you need to use your answer for A to answer B and C, if you don't have an answer for A, just make up something. Write down on the paper that you've made up something so that you can substitute it in. Because you should actually get 3 out of 3. So say if it's a calculation for B and C, you should actually get 3 out of 3 for B and C because it'd be error carried forward. My biggest tip is just don't panic. If you don't know something, come back to it. So that's my tips for physics. I really hope you enjoyed this video, got something useful out of it. Um, physics, I actually crashed Physics National 5 so I hadn't done it for two years and I personally found it really difficult in the start but I eventually caught up with everyone in the class and it was okay 
And it's actually become one of my favourite subjects. I was like, no, I'm never going to take physics. It's too hard, too difficult. But if you work at it, you'll get there and you will understand it. Well, understand most of it because I can't say that I understand everything in physics. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.